Well, he used to work at Oppenheimer and Company, so it was like, oh, it's Max Kaiser from Oppenheimer. Kind of nice ring to it. Does it? <laughs> kind of. That's where I was working during the crash of 87. Yeah, well, nothing, you can't really have a crash of 87-like situation anymore, can you? Because of the stop gap? No, they, the... they, well, they put in the collars, you mean, to yeah. uh, prevent the uh, markets from collapsing. But they uh, actually got rid of those. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they quietly kind of got rid of those. Oh, okay. So that one day fall in 87, October 87, how much was the... 20%. 28%? No, 20, 20%. 20%. Yeah. So the worst day um, of this financial crisis in 2008 was something like 777 points. That's nothing. Which was, which was l less than 10%. That's right. Less than 10%. Yeah, no, you need a two to three thousand point drop to really have the same shock value uh, as you did on October of uh, 1987, October 19th, 1987. Very memorable day. You know, I was in my office in Midtown Manhattan in the Exxon building overlooking uh, Rockefeller Center and eating a nice uh, cheese sandwich at my desk, watching the guy next to me fall over from drinking too much booze the night before and um, you're watching the world collapse in real time. It left quite an impression. Now, as a result, the next day, Alan Greenspan, Ronald Reagan, and Robert Rubin created the Working Group of Finance to allow the U.S. government... Working Group on Financial Markets. That's right. Allow the federal government to buy S&P futures contracts, the SPX. And uh, they, um, at that moment, crossed a very important line in the history of American free market capitalism because up until that moment, the government was, it was, it was illegal for the government to be an active participant in the markets as such, buying and selling in this way. And this is when it all changed. And the, what then became known as the Plunge Protection Team, which is a, what they call this group now, this, is a, this is meets every month just like the Federal Open Market Committee meets. They've got huge resources, and they steer prices according to which way they want to see prices going. So it's just part of the evolution or devolution of American markets to uh, Politburo-style fixed pricing, communist, uh, Soviet communist era, um, you know, uh, gulag, casino gulag.